on a recent trip to Dollar Tree, I came across these packs. These are paper packs that you can find in their crafting aisle. And I thought I have never thought about crafting with them. So I brought a couple of them home and I'm going to quickly show you the variety of paper that it has. It has different textures, different finishes, some with glitter, some thinner, some thicker. The variety that they have is intense. I was so impressed with all the texture. Some of them has so much texture, it actually look like pressed paper. You know what I'm talking about? Anyways, they all have different colors and the possibilities are endless. So I wanted to quickly show you the variety of paper that you can get in each pack. I am in love and I'm going to show you how I'm going to use a few right now. I want to start with this picture frame. I found this also at the crafting section and I love that it had this unique shape all around the edge. So I'm going to, of course, remove the plastic and I'm going to remove the middle portion. We're going to replace it in just a minute. Then we're going to paint the back of the frame. I just want to make sure that the back is going to be nice and neutral, but look finished. So I'm just going to do that real quick with a Waverly chalk paint and the sandstone tone. Then I'm going to let that dry. And now I am going to work in the middle portion of it. So I'm going to take the one that it came with and I'm going to use it as a guide. I'm just going to place it in the corner. I'm going to trace it with a pencil. That way I am going to have a piece that's going to go in the center. That's going to be updated and new, but still have the same exact shape and size. So once I had a cut, I put that to the side temporarily. Now let's get to the fun part. The back side is already dry. I'm going to take this piece of paper. It came in the pack, a yellow tone. It has a little bit of a glittery finish and I'm just going to start tearing them in pieces. I want to see that torn look and the white really pop. So I'm just going to start mod podging it all around the frame. My goal here is to have the entire thing covered to be able to see all the torn edges and I'm not concerned about the edges yet because we are going to trim that here in just a minute. So I'm going to add mod podge place each piece on top and then of course i need to mod podge the entire thing on top to make sure that it's sealed I let it dry for maybe about an hour under a fan and it is gorgeous. Okay, so now it's time to start trimming. I'm gonna use a very sharp X-Acto knife. I recommend very sharp because it just goes so much quicker and it's cleaner and smoother. I'm gonna go all around and just start cutting the excess paper from all the edges. It's a little thicker because this paper is actually more like cardstock. And then also with the Mod Podge, it made it really thick, but no big deal. The X-Acto knife really worked well so I'm going to trim the outside edges as well as the inside as you see here. So everything is nice and smooth. So now that we have the frame nicely covered, look how pretty that looks. All right, we're going to flip it over and I'm going to make sure that that little hole that I pointed to is going to be facing towards the bottom. I'm going to place that piece of yellow paper that I trimmed earlier or not yellow, orange. And then I'm going to take one of these stickers. You know, I love Dollar Tree stickers. They're very versatile possibilities are endless. I want to grab this one right here and I think the yellow on the sticker really pops with that yellow around the rim. I'm going to place it right in the center and then to finalize things I'm just going to flip it over and then we're going to add a little dab of hot glue inside the hole because the frame did come with this little doll that you can just place on there and that way you can actually stand the frame. This would be a great way to actually display pictures of course but something like this you can have it year round and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. You can use any paper, any design for this style. For the next DIY craft, I want to take this leftover summer little seahorse kind of sign. It was in the crafting aisle. I'm going to use my heating gun as well as my little scraper here. I'm just going to start pulling that apart. It doesn't matter if it's still a little sticky. I just want it to be smooth. So I'm going to take this textured, boy is it textured, this paper was again part of that paper pack, it is gorgeous, it's very thick, the color is stunning, and the texture, I think the camera doesn't really do justice, it is absolutely gorgeous. So what I did was I placed it in the center, 
really pushed it down in the corners. And then with the exacta knife, I just very carefully cut it and cut off the excess paper. So now we're just going to Mod Podge it, add plenty of Mod Podge there, and I'm just going to flatten it out until it's nicely attached. This wooden family words you can find at Dollar Tree, they come two in a pack. I'm going to leave it in the natural color just like the frame and just like the beads. I love that combination of the deep red and the natural wood tone. I'm gonna take these greeneries. These are just leaves that I had on hand from another pick. I'm gonna start separating a couple here and there and start hot gluing it in the upper left hand corner. And then I'm gonna add this tiny little flower from Dollar Tree. I just thought it little, needed just a little bit more touch of that natural color and look how gorgeous this looks. Now this is a much better view of that texture. It is so rich, it is so good, and I can't believe it came in that pack. For the next Dollar Tree DIY craft, we're gonna take this tiny little cutting board. I recently did another craft with it and I loved it. And I had an extra one and I thought, let me do something with it. I'm gonna paint the entire thing white. This is Waverly Chalk Paint in the white. I'm gonna do the front, the sides, as well as the back. And then we're gonna give it a little bit of a distress with some antiquing wax from Waverly and a little chippy brush. And I'm just gonna very lightly dry brush some lines going vertically. Friends, I would love to connect with you on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. And I always have those links down below in the description box. So make sure you check it out when you are done watching. Okay, so once I had it completely distressed, it dried really fast. I'm gonna take this piece of paper that came again in the pack, and we're just gonna start tearing it once again. And this time I'm gonna use the, the guide, like the edge of the cutting board as a guide, because I want it to fit nicely on the bottom of the cutting board. Now this is gonna be like a little pocket. So I'm just gonna start tearing as needed, and then I'm gonna take some thumbtacks, and I'm gonna start hammering them one in each corner, making sure that I am leaving a little bit of an opening, like a pocket style, right in the center. All right, my friends, I wanna invite you to stay to the end of the video. I have a huge announcement to share with you, so make sure you stay towards the end. All right, so we're just about done here. I'm just gonna place some greenery and some flowers right inside the little pocket. These are just random greenery that I had on hand, and then I added some pink flowers to really make that pink from the paper pop, and I think it's stunning. This would be great in a tear tray or just a little detail to add in any part of your decor and you can change it year round. This next DIY craft is so unique. I think you're going to love it. So we're going to start with one of these hanging shelves from Dollar Tree. We're just going to fill in those holes that it has just two on the bottom. You don't need the ones on the other side. Once dry, I sanded it down, including the entire thing to make sure it has no splinters and it's nice and smooth. Dusted it well, and then I'm gonna paint the whole thing white using Waverly Chalk Pen in the white. Of course, I'm gonna let that dry, and then we're gonna bring in this Love Ladder Style sign from Dollar Tree. I've had it for a while, actually since like the Valentine's Day season. So I'm just gonna try to carefully remove the love portion using my heating gun, as well as my little scraper, and it worked really well. I really went very carefully so I don't want to snap it. Any remaining glue, I just try to remove it as best as I can. I am going to paint it black. I'm gonna use Waverly Chalk Pen in the ink color and it's really black, so um, it's gonna cover any imperfections, but I did sand it down and wiped it very well. I'm gonna give it one coat and then let that fully dry. And then of course we gotta bring in the paper that we're gonna be using. It's another red one. I don't know why I was so attracted to the red one, but this one also has such texture all right so i'm going to fold it in half very carefully making sure that i'm not tightening or folding it too tightly in the center and i'm going to cut up what will be a heart so i'm just going to do a half heart cut it and then when you open it up you have a nice even heart and i'm going to hot glue that to the bottom right corner of the board then we're going to bring in the love portion and we're going to hot glue that to the left side all right, friends, I do want to encourage you to join my email list. I email once a week with current uploads as well as new news for my business. So check out that link. It is down in the description box. All right, we're going to bring in a few more of those leaves because I really like them. I'm just going to hot glue several just towards the bottom just to add a little bit of texture and greenery look. I've used this technique many times before. I'm just going to make some faux knots. I love using this because that way we don't have to just have tiny little rope, we can use a nice thick rope. So I'm gonna hot glue 
two faux knots right on top of the holes that were already on the board and I'm going to cut off the excess rope on each side and then hot glue it and then on the back we're just going to add another piece of the rope nothing fancy you know I love to have something to hang it with although it is optional and look how stunning this looks I love the way it looks it's very romantic but fresh and unique I love it let me know what you think Okay, my friends, so you know that I love crafting and you know that I love crafting with power tools and I have a huge announcement for you. I would love for you to join my crafting with power tools online course. If you are a new beginner crafter, if you want to take your crafting skills to a whole new level, if you want to use power tools, but you want to gain a little bit more confidence, if you want to save time and make more money, and if you just want to create high quality items, this is the course for you. I'll show you my favorite tools, the importance of safety, the benefits. I'll give you visual examples and breakdowns, and you can watch a start to finish project with every power tool discussed in the course. By the end of the course, you'll have a solid understanding of the basic power tools that are essential for crafting home decor. You also gain confidence to tackle a whole wide range of DIY crafts. So what you want to do is you want to check out the description box. There's a link down there that says join online course. You also want to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. You also want to follow me on my other social media platforms and get crafting. So I hope you join me. Check it out. It is linked below. Okay, friends, that's it for today. Let me know which one is your favorite. Here's another video for you to watch. Click on it. I'll see you later and have a blessed day. Bye.